What's going on everyone? Welcome to another Keyshot tutorial. In this video, we'll take a look at Keyshot 10's RealCloth 2.0 and learn how all the new updates can help you create incredibly realistic woven materials even faster. In Keyshot 10, RealCloth 2.0 offers a series of new UI updates and processing updates that allow for better control over RealCloth applications, as well as increased fiber level details. These UI updates include a new interface for weave presets and pattern editing, as well as display options to switch between one-sided, two-sided, and 3D ply, which we'll talk about shortly. Let's start by taking a look at some of the UI changes. With a real cloth material applied and your material property subtab open, you'll notice a weave pattern dropdown located at the top of the subtab. In Keyshot 9, this dropdown was located within the Edit Weave Pattern window, but it can now quickly be found at the top of the property subtab. And you can still access the Edit Weave Pattern window by selecting the Edit button to the right of the weave dropdown. If you're familiar with RealCloth UI in Keyshot 9, you'll notice that the accordions within the property subtab have also changed. Warp and weft colors can now be accessed outside of an accordion and a few of the controls have been added here as well. The Geometry Accordion can still be found in the Properties subtab, but controls and display options have changed. From this accordion, you can customize your weave by interacting with the Warp Ply controls and selecting between three new display options. The first two, Single-Sided and Two-Sided Ply, will create a real cloth material that looks identical to what you can achieve in Keyshot 9. However, with Two-Sided, you can now have flyaways on both sides of your material. The third is 3D ply. This is easily one of the biggest updates to real cloth in Keyshot 10. Notice with 3D ply selected, my woven material adopts geometry that makes it look even more realistic than ever before. This is because you get a fully three-dimensional thread that accurately represents physical thread dimensions. This not only makes threads appear more realistic, but it also creates 360 degree normals for flyaways and allows light to pass through the material. Together, these improvements significantly increase the believability of woven materials in Keyshot, both for faraway shots as well as close to macro ranges. Note that using 3D ply requires more computing power than using single ply or two-sided, so definitely take that into account based on the hardware you're currently running. Below your geometry settings is the Flyaway Fibers Accordion. Here you'll find all your flyaway geometry controls, which control settings such as flyaway density, length, and radius. Under that is the advanced accordion, where you can control appearance settings such as warp and weft color variation, as well as fiber detail and anti-aliasing. Just a side note, if at any point you'd like to learn more about what each individual setting controls, simply hover over the setting's name and a tooltip will appear giving you a brief description. Now that you're more familiar with the updates to RealCloth UI in Keyshot 10, let's take a look at what applying some of these features would look like. The model I'm currently using, provided by Magnus Skogsfjord, is an incredibly useful tool for exploring RealCloth, and if you'd like to use it as well, you can download it directly from our welcome window by hitting the hotkey W and selecting it from our demo scenes. If you are using your own scene, keep in mind that best results are achieved when your models have been properly UV unwrapped. You can do this either in your modeling software of choice or by using the Unwrap UV tool under Tools in the ribbon above. In Keyshot 10, you can still find preset real cloth materials under the Material tab, but if you scroll through the options, you'll notice a few new ones with 3D Ply already enabled. Once you select the material and apply it, Keyshot will automatically update geometry to show you an accurate representation of your weave. From here, you can dive into your settings and start fine-tuning your material's appearance. Remember that after making adjustments to your flyaways or geometry, if Keyshot does not automatically update, you'll need to execute your geometry by using the Execute Geometry icon at the top right of the real-time view or by selecting the Execute Geometry node button at the bottom of your material properties. RealCloth is an incredibly flexible material in Keyshot 10, and exploring settings and pattern controls can help you dial in a wide variety of materials. One of the other unique elements that this version of RealCloth has to offer is the ability to quickly create weaves of different materials using the Material Graph. If you have 3D Ply enabled and the Material Graph open, you can easily create different mesh-like materials from any material at your disposal. Simply disconnect the real cloth output from the parent material surface input 
and connect it to the geometry input. Then, choose the material you'd like to apply to your weave, drag and drop it into the material graph, and connect it to the surface input. In this case, I want my material to be a plastic mesh, so I'll go ahead and deselect the flyaway fiber checkbox and update my geometry as well. Your real cloth application should at this point appear to be made of the newly applied surface material. This is a great way to quickly create mesh materials from existing real cloth presets, but you can always make your own custom weaves from scratch using the geometry accordion or, for even greater control, the edit weave pattern window. Overall, Real Cloth 2.0's updates have definitely improved the realism of woven materials in Keyshot and at the same time made Real Cloth easier than ever to use. Thanks for watching this Keyshot 10 Real Cloth tutorial. If you're interested in more useful Keyshot content, hit that subscribe button and get notified as soon as new videos hit the channel. Don't forget to let us know your thoughts on this tutorial in the comment section below, and if you found this video useful, give it a like and share with your friends.